Hello Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well something a little different today. I thought this would be fun. This is a piece that I did uh, years ago. Actually before my watercolor channel even existed. This is probably 10 years old at least. It was a spontaneous painting uh, but it's got one unusual distinction about it. Uh, a lot of these trees were drawn in and last year when I started teaching local classes uh, it, it kind of surprised me. I got more questions about this, or I got a lot. Let's just say I got a lot of questions about this painting. Um, but what we're going to talk about, and I don't know, I, I don't uh, use this technique a lot, not because it's not good. It's just something that I forget about and don't think about, but it's actually a really great technique. And I've never done a video on it that I could recall. So it's high time we did. And uh, it's something you might want to appropriate into your little bag of tricks. It just allows uh, some interesting control and options. Essentially, that is just drawing with watercolor. I mean, taking a pen, a dip pen in this case, and this is the one I'm going to use today, a nib that's normally used with pen and ink, but you draw with watercolor instead of ink. You can also use this for gouache, and you can also use it for acrylic. Usually acrylic inks work best. But we're going to focus just on watercolor, the very same watercolor that you paint with. I'm going to show you uh, just some things to think about and some things that I think work best. And then we're going to do another little uh, spontaneous painting and drawing. Okay, so I had this out last night and I was playing around with it again just to kind of warm myself up. Let's zoom in here because uh, I'm going to want you to see some of this really close. First of all, let's talk about the nib. And these are just standard uh, dip pen, pen and ink nibs. Really any nib will work but uh, what I prefer are these slightly bigger ones that have a good deal of spread because they're uh, they give you more flexibility in your line but they also give you a lot of uh, flow starting capability you can see when when you press see that spread now the other thing to keep in mind this is by the way this is a hunt Let's show you this package Hunt 512 or 513 EF. This is the one I'm using. Uh, even this one would be a good one. This is a bigger one. They both uh, will put down a very, very fine line and both make, I think, a decent uh, nib for watercolor. But we're going to use the 512 today. Uh, I'll list all of these supplies below as I usually do. This is a Takakawa holder. I mean, you could use a Zebra G nib, you could use a Nico G nib. And they're a little stiffer maybe i don't know uh whatever you have if you have some nibs just experiment with what you have you don't have to go out and buy this nib i'm not saying it's the best nib but of what i use what i have i like the way it works so let's talk about paint and you can just use the regular paint on your palette uh, i've got some Payne's gray here i'm pulling out it'll probably be easier for you to see and your nibs need to be seasoned so if you look back at the nib the way i fill a nib is just to paint water on the back. I usually like that little slot to be covered. It doesn't have to be. Uh, it'll That holds uh, actually more water and you can see where it's beating up and, and shrinking back. It's going to do that. No matter how much uh, abrasion and preparation you make the nib, uh, watercolor being very watery is just going to do that. So that's how I fill and load the nib. And if it's beating up a lot more than that to where it's just like a ball, you don't have your nib prepared well enough. And there are a number of ways you can do it. Um, I usually just use a little bit of light sandpaper because it's quick. I also, one thing I tried that seems to work is I, I just let the paint dry on here, put some paint on here and let it dry. Maybe add a little gum Arabic and just, um, and this is even after I've sanded the nib. Uh, you can use a, a cleaner, a metal uh, polisher, toothpaste. Some people use a lighter. Uh, usually the lighter uh, burns off the oils, manufacturing oils. But uh, notice how I'm able to make extremely fine, fine hairlines here. And I've got a fairly pale mixture. But then I can, I can press get that variation in width so it's really really cool and I use it primarily for grasses and tree limbs 
So this is what I would do first before I even try to use this if I were you in a painting is I would find the nib that you want to try. Get some sandpaper or some coarse steel wool. Get it nice and rubbed down. Dip it in some paint. Maybe some cleaner. I mean look at that hairline. And it's watercolor. You know what you do with it after that is up to you. Usually the line stays to a certain degree because that point is sort of scribing it into the paper. Now be careful about once you've got water down, be careful about going back. Uh, you may want this effect, but you go back in here, you will scratch the paper deeply. And that's okay if, if that's what you want to do. This is a technique you just uh, want to play with. Basically instruct yourself as to what it will do and make mental notes about what it's doing and how you might be able to use that. This is what I've been doing over here. Just trying all sorts of things. I learned, have learned more about watercolor by doing stuff like this than just about any other way. Put it down dry, go back and wet it, see what it does. See this down here that's already dried. Um, you can glaze over that and it won't lift it right away. But this right here was still wet and load your brush and uh, you can make it much darker and inkier as I mentioned uh, in uh, sort of my intro you can do you can use acrylic and gouache with this and I will save that probably for future episodes maybe do some of that this is a technique though that I forgot how much I loved and I often forget that I did it at all. So it was really helpful to get this out and play with it again. You can add some interesting styles. Yeah, so uh, choose a good nib. One preferably that has a wide spread. Make sure it's broken in. Use anything abrasive to, to get it nice and worn down. Try coating it with gum arabic or if you don't have any gum arabic don't go buy it. Just completely coat uh, if you get thicker paint I don't know why this works maybe some science-minded person can tell me but it does if you get a thicker paint that won't I mean real almost pasty coat your nib you may have to do this several times but that seems to help it take watercolor better with all of that said let's go on and do a painting all right so I've got a brand new block here of Winsor Newton Pro it's been a while since I've used this paper but I really really like this 100% cotton paper and I've already got my scene taped off driving around seeing all the winter trees which I love I mean I could just paint those all day long and you see a lot of that that bare branch structure which is just very interesting to me now normally if it's a more distant tree line or trees I'll put in some of the branches and then paint the really fine ones with a dry brush I redid this tutorial on dry brushing bare limbs that I did years ago and I remade it for patrons so uh, if you're a patron and you haven't seen that make sure you go see that but inevitably you'll get some trees that are a little closer up and I think if you're really trying to get some fine branches fine detail uh, this is easier to use this technique than a rigger or a spotter and I thought about wetting the paper entirely and getting it soaked but I think what I'm going to do is use spatter instead or a spray spatter combination. I want kind of a gully, sort of a embankment, shoom, like this way and this, and maybe some trees growing out of it. I'm gonna use this big brush here, I think. I'm at about a 20 degree angle. I'm not flat, but I'm not on a high angle either. Colors are not real important to me today, and I already had some red on my palette, so I may just let that kind of come in here this is in the middle here this is neutral tint got some Payne's gray down here probably add a little bit of cobalt blue on the cold end and we'll use this red up here on the warm end and that spatter is hopefully going to take and do interesting things and this, I want this to be uh, very impressionistic. 
<laughs> that's just I had never ceased to marvel at what watercolor will do for you and that's that spatter spray technique which is still just one of my favorite for landscape I'm using the edge of this brush to sort of pre paint some of my tree shapes and I want I don't want to split my composition so I'm gonna get some some uh, interest focal points heavier on this side spray off that edge here and make that fade a little more over there it'll soak it up where it goes off the tape here but I don't mind these dots sort of being dark. They won't dry because you're looking through a large droplet. They won't dry nearly that dark. But I like the, the deeper value sort of sinking. I think I'm going to bring in my uh, Princeton Neptune Oval Wash now. I'm just going to pop in some deeper tones. I want to do a lot of drawing of trees since that's what this episode's about. So essentially I'm just giving myself a base to draw on. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to let that dry. Alright, so this is dry. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start out by using uh, just a brush because I want to put in some fat trunks or the main trunks. To decide where the trees are going to go and then we'll get into a little more of the drawing. I think what I'm going to do now is put in some really faint branches just to give this some, some dimension. So I'll be watering down my color. I'm going to change the color a little bit. Again, sort of a violet gray and much paler. So I've got very fine details going here that are fainter and they sink into the background a little more. So I want to be able to add that in places just to pull your eye through this uh, piece and dimension. 
Basically, you're just creating textures uh, that look like tree branches, but they uh, you're using texture as a creative device. I like making these look like they're just sort of some of these clusters of branches are uh, just sort of rising out of the mist. Yeah, and you know what? I hadn't planned to do this, um, but I just feel like there needs to be maybe right in here some lighter color branches. So I'm going to pull out some gouache. All right, so all in all, I think I'm pretty happy with that, and we're going to leave it for now. I'll stare at it a bit more and just see if it needs anything else. Give that dip pen nib a try and draw with some watercolor. Fun, fun, fun. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you, patrons, for your support. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.